So you want to read the old Star Wars EU, but you don't know where to start. And you don't want to start with the Thrawn trilogy because you missed Darth Vader. Uh, this is an easy, easy pick. You go into the shadows. Aboard the Executor, Vader considered his upcoming meeting with Luke. Since they last met, the boy had come to terms with what he had been told. On some level, he must know the truth, that Vader was his father. Of course, that had been in another lifetime when Vader had still been Anakin Skywalker, but the fact of it had remained. He would turn him. He knew that he could, because he had felt the dark side rise in Luke, had felt the power of his anger. The boy had loosed it once. He could be made to free it again. Each repetition became easier. The dark side was a path that grew wider and deeper each time you trod upon it. Soon, there would be no effort at all for Luke to allow the dark side to rule. Hey, what's up, bookworms and Star Wars fans? Mike here again today to talk about the Star Wars Extended Universe. Not the new Extended Universe, but the old one, and to me, the one that I still consider canon. And I'm going to do that today by talking about Shadows of the Empire by Steve Perry. The reason I want to talk specifically about this book is because a lot of people dropped into my, my Thrawn video, and if you didn't catch that, I will put it up here for you to check out. Uh, I apologize for the lighting and sound issues. That's when I was still experimenting a lot with this channel, and uh, that one didn't work so well. But uh, very much love for the Thrawn trilogy. I would definitely would never take anything away from it. But I had a lot of people ask me in that video, uh, where should I start? And I'm like, well, this is the best place to start because you've only had to see the original three movies to understand what's going on. And a couple people were like, ah, that's pretty cool, but you know what? I just kind of missed Darth Vader. And I was like, I got something for you. Uh, what you do is you check out this book called The Shadows of the Empire. Now, what Shadows of the Empire is, for those who do not know, is this takes place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. If you've ever been watching, just if you're just one of the people who just watched the movies and that's it, and you ever wondered, all right, what happened between these two movies? Because last time we saw Luke, you know, he was missing a hand and he was just still, he was failing his training and then he comes into Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi. He's just this badass Jedi Knight. What happened? Well, like six months to a year passed between that and that's all explained in this book right here. And what is so terrific about this book is it's the first time that it really branched out and created new characters that, char that that fans really, really latched onto. There is a, let's just say, a Han Solo. Too. You think, okay, hey, so you're trading, Darth, getting Darth Vader back, but you're losing Han Solo, right? There is a, a Han Solo-ish kind of pilot in this named Dash Rendar, uh, who flies this amazing Millennium Falcon type ship called the Outrider. So a lot of people will automatically look at these and say, ah, it just sounds like Walmart Han Solo. Well, Walmart Han Solo is better than no Han Solo, in my opinion. And Dash is a character that I actually liked quite a bit. I kind of imagine like a Kurt Russell type in my head, like 80s Kurt Russell. If you, know, you guys probably think of Kurt Russell. Now, right off the bat, guys, I'm a huge Kurt Russell fan, have been my whole life. The guy can do no wrong, in my opinion. So when I read Dash Rendar, I thought, hey, that would be a perfect Kurt Russell. Anyway, uh, it has the Emperor in it. You got Darth Vader. You got Luke. You got Han. You got Leia. You got Lando. I mean, the whole gang is here, except, you know, Han's frozen in carbonite at the time. And, uh, and, and uh, you actually get to see a little bit more of the Emperor. So you'd be seeing the Emperor a little more early than you would, obviously, when you didn't really see him in the movies until Return of the Jedi, other than that little, you know, long-distance Skype call they do in Empire Strikes Back. But uh, the, the villain mainly in this one is not Darth Vader. It is uh, Prince Zizor. I don't recall what his race is at this moment. But uh, basically, he's trying to take Vader's place as, like, the Emperor's number one guy. And uh, this is before we knew about Mara Jade, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, it, it it doesn't ever feel out of place. It really feels like this could exist. Like, it almost feels like this is a movie script that they wrote in case uh, Harrison Ford didn't come back to do Return of the Jedi or something. That's what it really feels like. It fits right in there. And if you like the bounty hunters in this series, 
guys, you're going to love it. Boba Fett's in this. IG-88's in this. Really good stuff with IG-88 in there. Uh, it's just a fun, fun adventure. And I, I think the reputation that the EU has is, oh, well, most of it's crap. That is complete garbage. Okay, I've talked about it here in the Star Wars EU video. And again, I apologize for the lighting and the sound issues. Uh, again, that's an experiment I'll never do. I tried to do it, I tried to do it back there by the books, and the sound just sounded terrible. So I will never do that again, at least not while I still have a wired microphone. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have the wired microphone for a while. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, there are some bad moments in the EU. There are some real clunkers. I mean, we're talking hundreds of novels here. You're bound to have some clunkers. That's like saying that the X-Files, what was on for what, like 200-something episodes, never had a bad episode. It did. You know what? But the good episodes far outweighed the bad ones. With the EU, I would probably say, at least for me, I'm like 80-20 on how much I love the EU. Uh, I never read any of the X-Wing books, but you know, I read all of the, the New Jedi Order, all of the uh, Legacy of the Force. I read all of the... Everything just leading up to... From between uh, uh, Air of the Empire and up to, I guess... Fate of the Jedi is the series I didn't read because that's when I found out that it got uh, that it, that Disney was pulling the plug on the EU, but um, I'll get to it one day. Anyway, where this ranks for me, I, I felt like this is very very approachable for someone who is new to the EU. It, this would be the first one you're picking up. It's not a hard read at all. You'll know who all the characters are. If you don't know who a character is, it comes up. Go to Wikipedia and look them up, and you'll see a picture. And nine times out of ten, it's going to be someone that you saw in Moss Eisley Cantina in the very first movie. Yes, characters even they were on the second at the screen for just seconds wind up in this book. But again, it feels organic. It never feels forced or anything like that. So I very highly recommend it. Fun adventure. You get to see Darth Vader in full power, being a badass, doing what he do. And you, you know, again, you don't feel like he's the villain in this story. Uh, but uh, yeah, you still have much of Luke's journey about how he got to where he got. And for me, what I liked the first time I read this, which was in high school, uh, I, I think it was for me, it was getting more Lando. You know, I was like, okay, get to see what Lando's up to and stuff like that and see how he got, uh, you know, embedded into Jabba's palace. So, so many loose ends, I feel like it ties up. And again, guys, this will always be canon to me because it doesn't feel like it's retconned. It feels like it belongs. And you know what? For 20-something years, it did. It did. So I don't care what Pablo Hidalgo says. This shit matters, and it counts, at least for me. Uh, I don't care what the official story is. The official stuff to me is fan fiction. That's why I will not be going to see Star Wars in a week, so you guys have fun with that. Uh, but the, that is all I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about uh, the state of Star Wars. I talked about the state of Star Wars right there, if you care to listen to it at all. But um, any other questions you guys have about the EU, please don't be uh, scared to ask. Uh, I feel like more and more people are getting interested in it because this is a very, very divisive issue. I understand that. If uh, you aren't quite satisfied with the uh, the Disney movies, like I have not been, other than Rogue One, I love Rogue One. Uh, if you are kind of looking for something to scratch that Star Wars itch, and people are, and they've been getting into, okay, I'm going to go back and read some of these old EU books because I never really got into them. I've said numerous times, again, I feel like the Star Wars EU was the MCU, Marvel's Cinematic Universe, before that happened. Because what the MCU has is you have that one architect guy, Kevin Feige, telling people, okay, this is the story. Here We want you to go from here, and we want you to get to here. But you, what happens in here is up to you. You figure out how to get us there. I felt like that's how it was. You always had an architect telling you, okay, this is what's got to happen at the beginning and the end of this book. This is where we end the last one. This is where we need you to get to. Because the next author is going to be working on this one. So it's like a different director for every book. And there are some repeats in, in there. But it just, it all, it all mattered. It all cowed together. And you saw stuff from books that happened 20 books ago from a different author brought up by another author later. That's just awesome. So it's a very, very living, breathing universe that many people will never let go. And I'm one of them. So uh, again, any questions you guys have, please drop in the comments. Let me know. Did you read Shadows of the Empire? Did you care for it? What did you think? What would you change? You know, do you still consider this canon like I do? Uh, so uh, again, guys, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you in the comments.